All right, we are officially oh. recording. Hello and welcome to our charcuterie class for the day. So what I wanna make sure before we get started, um, you're gonna need some sort of charcuterie board. I personally love one that has high sides. Um, you can use like a flat cutting board. You can even take a piece of parchment paper and put that on the table or like craft paper um, and do your charcuterie board right on the table you're gonna serve it. But having something with a bit of a lip around the edge kind of helps to contain everything in. So I think it adds a little bit more structure, makes your board look a bit nicer. Um, and then you're gonna wanna have some sort of bowls, little bowls to be able to uh, add in your like, olives and other bits and pieces. So some ramekins for little bowls, uh, mason jars work. Let's just be honest, if we all have some leftover bud jars, if they're nice jars, like some of these jars are really interesting and fun shapes. So you can always use your leftover jars from your bud to, to decorate the board as well. And then we've got all of the items for our meats and cheeses. So we've got two different types of cheese. We have a manchego and we have a cheddar cheese. When making your charcuterie board, honestly, two cheeses is a really good place to start. Don't overwhelm people. Don't think you've got to have 20 different types of cheese. Is it difficult to hear? Go ahead, you can chat with me, tell me, unmute yourself if you can hear me. Can everybody hear okay? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Okay. Vanessa, are you having trouble hearing me? It's, it's just, uh, the audio just changed. I can hear you though. Okay. If you're having trouble, let me know. I can always, I, I can not scream. I can talk quietly. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> All right, so we've got two cheeses. That's a really good place to start. Don't need to overwhelm people. Um, what I like to say is find something neutral, so like a cheddar cheese that everybody loves, and then find something maybe a little bit more exciting. So in this case, I went with a manchego. Uh, you could do any cheeses that you like. Uh, one of the things that I just saw really interesting the other day was someone who had taken a, a log of goat cheese and used fresh cannabis flowers and fresh uh, actual edible flowers and wrapped the goat cheese log in it and it looked stunning. So you can always find interesting ways to incorporate cannabis onto your board. Um, and then I've got these little meat wrapped pieces of cheese. So it's nice to have something of meat on your board. And then we've got our soap that we're gonna turn into something. I like neutral crackers. Sliced bread works really well, but I'm a fan of crackers. And then you have to have something fresh on the board. Using all kind of canned products or pre-processed products can be a little flat. So I'm gonna add strawberries today. If you have apples or pears or uh, any fresh item, even sliced cucumbers, then people can put the cheese on a cucumber and call that a snack, that works really well. So I'm gonna get started in this in just a minute, but I'd like to introduce the two wonderful ladies that will be assisting us here today. We have Vanessa and Jocelyn. Uh, Vanessa is here from Infinitely Elevated Events. And Vanessa, if you'd like to unmute yourself and give us a quick introduction and let us uh, get, get to know you. Hey, everybody. I'm Vanessa with Infinitely Elevated Events or Experiences. We create immersive experiences using cannabis education um, to enhance your sensory, your, your sensories. So um, this is uh, definitely something to tickle your palate. We are focusing on the taste sensory, the gustory experience uh, with Chef Jen here. Um, I am also bored on Mommies and Mary Jane, who will be hopping on in a second to kind of introduce herself, the, the owner, the innovator. I'm bringing us all together for that. Um, and I really look forward to, uh, you know, working with them to curate more of these experiences that we can all enjoy virtually. Off to Jocelyn, the owner of yes. Mommies and Mary Jane. Jocelyn for Mommies and Mary Jane, why don't you take a moment and say hi and introduce yourself as well. Oh, you need to unmute yourself. That's the beauty of Zoom. <laughs> oh, I'm Jocelyn Harris, the founder of Mommies and Mary Jane, which is a parent operated network where we are just about, you know, sustaining wellness through cannabis. Also, you know, supporting our community through enrichment endeavors like this. Um, we are very excited to partner with Chef Jen and Infinitely Elevated because this goes right along with what we what we are about. You know, um, we believe that knowledge is power and through that knowledge, you know, we can change policy 
we can change, you know, we can rebuild communities. We can do so much with um, knowledge of this plant, um, how it affects our bodies, how, you know, it benefits us in our daily lives. And that's why we love Chef Jen so much because she's very knowledgeable on it. And, um, and we want to incorporate it into our lifestyle. So this is a lifestyle event that Vanessa has, has, I don't know what goes on in this girl's brain, but she comes up with this beautiful, um, fun and engaging um, things for the members. And we're just gonna continue to build from here. So it's only up from here and we're excited. Thank you. And thank you ladies. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm really excited to me. One of the things I love about cannabis is the cannabis, cannabis community. So we have this wonderful community of women, yes, women supporting each other and helping to build this uh, beautiful network of cannabis. So to get started, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Jen or Chef Jen. Uh, I am a personal chef in San Diego. So I do private dinner parties, um, intimate dinners anywhere from two to 10 people. Uh, I do virtual cooking classes and I do in-person cooking classes as well as events. So I'm a kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to food and entertainment. And in the last couple of years, I've really started integrating cannabis into my uh, traditional dinner parties. But then also with my background in education, I've decided to pivot into adding more virtual and uh, in-person educational events using cannabis. So that's just a little background on myself. Before we get started today, I've kind of gone over everything, but the first thing I want to do is to create this beer mustard. And one of the things that I think is really interesting is talking to people about how to create edibles that aren't what they would traditionally think of as an edible. Like, we assume an edible is a brownie or a gummy or something with cannabis butter or cannabis oil. But really a lot of the interesting products available on the market allow you to create edibles with just about anything. So what I have here, this is High Style Brewing. They do a blood orange cannabis beer. Now the word beer is there, but there's no actual alcohol in this product whatsoever. So this is actually completely infused with cannabis. And then this one here is actually from a traditional brewery, Lagunitas, but they've partnered up with Hi-Fi Hops and they are making a CBD and a THC beer. So I've got both of these beers here today. You can choose to go higher in CBD or higher in THC, whichever you prefer. That's one of the things I love about when you can make your own edibles, you can decipher how much cannabis, how little cannabis, how much CBD, how much THC, you can really customize it to your personal desires. And then the other things going into this are going to be some mustard, either yellow mustard or Dijon mustard. And then I have mustard powder. This is kind of a cheat recipe. It's really, really simple. So what I'm going to start with is I have two tablespoons of my cannabis beer. And I'm going to do equal parts of cannabis beer to my mustard powder. Now, there's two tablespoons in here. The entire container is... Uh, 12, mil or 12 ounces and 10 milligrams. So really all I'm looking at here is about three milligrams of THC for this entire recipe. And what I love about that is it allows you to microdose. So I'm gonna add in my two tablespoons of mustard. What's also really nice about this as an edible is it's not a gummy, it's not a brownie. You don't really have to worry about overconsumption. It's a very spicy beer mustard. And you're not going to end up with people going and just slathering it everywhere. They're going to consume in a very small, leveled amount. So to me, this is a great starter for any of your friends to kind of get introduced to cannabis. You know, they'll put maybe a quarter of a milligram onto whatever they're eating with a piece of uh, meat or a piece of cheese. And that way they can slowly start to get used to that relaxed, calm cannabis feeling. So I've stirred together. And then I'm gonna add in the exact same amount. So if I have two tablespoons of beer and I have two tablespoons of mustard, I wanna put in four tablespoons of my Dijon mustard. So it's one to one on the ground mustard and the beer. And then it is the total amount of beer and ground mustard is how much of the prepared mustard you're going to use. Odd ratios. So you're doing equal amounts, so two tablespoons each of beer and two tablespoons of your prepared mustard. 
or your mustard powder, and then four tablespoons of the prepared mustard. Now this is going to look a bit runny and that's perfectly okay. Uh, you could serve it straight as it is now and it's going to be incredibly spicy. If you let this sit for a day, it'll start to mellow a bit more. It'll start to get a bit thicker. If you give it three or even four days and you're going to want to refrigerate it because we have not heated this, we haven't treated it, so there could be bacteria. You don't want to leave it sitting on your counter. But if you keep it for three or four days, the spice will start to mellow and it won't be as pungent. But I love this because it is super strong, super spicy. You get a small dose in each bite and you don't have to worry about anyone over consuming. Now this mustard, I'm gonna put it right into one of my little dishes so I can put it right onto my board. Once you have this mustard, obviously, we're putting it on a charcuterie board for today, but now you have mustard. Make a sandwich, make a salad dressing, make a marinade. This is an edible. In under two minutes, I made an edible. <laughs> it's really just that simple. So I want you guys to understand that edibles don't have to be complicated. They don't have to be overly intricate. Adding a couple of ingredients together. And this is also really nicely microdosed, allowing you to consume other edibles as part of the ultimate dish or allowing you to smoke or allowing you to consume uh, cannabis beverages. I don't feel like you ever need to do a really high dose in any one item. You want someone to be able to have an entire meal that allows you to completely incorporate cannabis into every aspect of it. Abby, have you tasted your mustard? How is it? All right, so I'm going to take just a little piece and give it a taste. It's nice and spicy. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. That's my happy place. Woo! Yeah, it gives you that nice little burn in the back of your throat, but it's delicious. All right, so I now have my beer mustard. I'm ready to start my charcuterie board. And when we do a charcuterie board, it's a big, fancy French term, but really, we're looking to create something elegant with meats and cheeses. I try to do a little bit of sweet and savory or complementary or opposing flavor. So I want like, if I'm gonna have spicy mustard, I'm gonna have my sweet strawberries. If I'm going to have my sour uh, acidic olives, I'm gonna have a neutral cracker. I want to create different flavors and different interests on my charcuterie board. The first step to any board is putting down your anchors. Anchors are things that you're going to use to build other items around. So in this case, I'm going to have my beer mustard and I have a little bowl of olives. So if you want to go ahead and take out your olives and you've got two of your bowls out, so you can pour your olives into one. And I'm going to place those in two different corners on the board because I want to be able to build things around here, build things over here, and build around and around. Everything in threes looks more visually appealing to the eye. So I have my mustard as one anchor, I have my olives as the other anchor, and then I'm going to use my prosciutto wrapped cheese as another anchor. So I'm just gonna build kind of a log cabin. Just a couple on there, stack them up. Whenever you add height to a board, it looks more visually appealing. Things that look flat, anytime you put food on a surface and it looks, sits completely flat, people assume that it's flat and dull and boring flavor-wise because it looks completely flat on the board to begin with. So the more interest and the more height that you can give to a board, the more interesting the board becomes. So what we have here are our three anchors, and now we're ready to start building around our anchor. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my soppressata or my salami. So soppressata is essentially the same thing as salami. The only difference is soppressata has finer chunks, or sorry, larger chunks. Um, salami is ground a little finer. So you can chop it up with a knife, and because everything in it is ground so fine, you don't have to put it on like one of the machines to slice really thin. With soppressata, you can see there's 
whole peppercorns in there. There's large bits of fat in there. So these have to be professionally sliced. You have to buy them in a package. What we're going to do, obviously, you can take this whole chunk and put it right on there, but that's not appealing to your guests. It's just not nice. I never just throw something on. So what I want you to do is to separate a few slices. Get this so that it's not all stuck together. And we're going to make a root. So to do that, you're going to take one slice of your soppressata and fold it in half. Once you have it folded in half, you're going to roll it in on itself. Just kind of tuck and roll and squeeze it tight. Just fold it in half and roll it. And then you're going to take your next slice and you're going to fold that in half. And then you're going to start where your last piece left off. And you're going to roll around. I'm going to turn on my camera closest to me real quickly so you can see this. So I'm going to take one slice of salami. I'm going to fold that salami in half. And then I'm going to start where my last piece left off, overlapping. And then I'm going to roll around. And as you add your slices, you're going to get up bigger and bigger into a rose. So let's do a couple more. Fold that in half. Start where my last piece left off. And wrap around. And I'm just going to keep adding on slices. This is just a way to add a bit more visual interest. Again, it's going to make your board look like you did something special and not just bought it at Costco. Obviously, if you didn't want to make the fancy rows, you can take your salami slices and just fold them in half and place them onto the board, that works just fine. This is just a little bit nicer, and I get to show you how to make something beautiful. So I'm just going to keep adding slices so I get a nice large rose. We don't need to use the whole package. We're probably going to use about two thirds of it. I'm just going to keep wrapping. Let's do one or two more slices. And then what we want to do is we want to butt this up against one of our anchors so that it sits in place. Let's put one more slice over here. So I'm going to take and press that right up against my anchor so that it has a place to sit. And then what we can do is we're going to put some cheese right next to it, so it's going to help to hold it right in place. Abby, can I see your rose? You want to hold it up the camera so I can see how yours turned out? <laughs> She's like, no, no, but yes, yes, let me see. I bought the wrong thing, so I couldn't make it. It's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm building, like you said, though, so. Oh, good. Okay. So as long as you, again. There's always a way to make this work. You don't have to make it perfect every single time. I'm just going to throw together one more rose with my remaining pieces. And we'll do two more slices, and that'll give us a little second rose to put right along the side. All right. I've got my first rose, and then I'm just going to tuck my second little rose right next to it just adds a bit more interest right onto the board. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is our cheddar cheese. Now, a lot of times when you go to the stores and you see a cheese platter, it's sliced cheese or cube cheese. And I don't want it to look like I went to a grocery store and bought this. So what I want you to do is you're going to break the cheese. And I'll show you how we do that. So you're gonna take the tip of your knife, go in and then turn. And all you're doing is breaking your cheese into chunks. This looks like little pieces of cheese curd. It doesn't look like you bought it at Costco. It just looks a bit more interesting. And what you're doing here is you're creating bite-sized pieces for your guests. So no one has to come in and try to hack off a piece of cheese. And let's just be honest, if you were to put this whole thing right on the board, no one's going to eat it. No one's coming to your house with a Swiss Army knife trying to cut apart cheese on your cutting board. So the nice thing to do for your guests is to cut your cheese 
into pieces for them. And I personally like, I take my knife in and I twist and I'm just gonna break off chunks of cheddar cheese. And I don't need the whole thing, I'm gonna use about two thirds of it. And then we're gonna place these next to our roses so that we get something to hold our roses in place. So you can see here, we're already starting to add interest and texture. Now, the other thing with this is I'm guiding people for where to eat. So the meat goes with the mustard, so the meat goes next to the mustard. The olives are a palate cleanser, so you can do your meat and cheese and olive. So I'm kind of directing you where to go. I'm not just eating you willy nilly, I'm trying to show you where to go. How are we doing so far? Thumbs up? <laughs> so I've got my cheddar cheese, I've got my beautiful roses, I've got my olives, I've got my prosciutto wrapped cheese, and now I'm going to move on to the manchego. Now manchego has a skin on the outside of it, so I'm going to cut that off. I never put the rind on the cutting, on the cheese rind onto a cheese board if I don't have to. So like a brie, you're pretty much going to need to leave that rind on the outside or else the whole thing just melts and falls apart. But I don't want to put this on the board so that someone, one, accidentally eats it, or two, has to like find a place to put it. The worst thing in the world to me is like if you had pits inside of your olive and your poor guest has to try and hold a pit in their hand for the rest of the night. You know, do your guests a favor, cut off the stuff that they don't want. So now I have a perfect triangle. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna slice from one end to the other. And I'm looking for maybe a quarter inch thick. They don't need to be too thick or too thin. And I like to put the tip of the cheese, the narrow end closest to me and the wide end further away so that I get the angle of my knife to do all the work for me. And I'm just gonna slice down and cut slices with my cheese. While I'm doing this, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to type questions in the chat box. We're also going to ask questions or answer questions at the end. What's really nice is we'll just sit down, we'll eat our charcuterie board, and we're gonna chit chat about all things cooking, cannabis, and cheese. Now, what I like about this particular cheese is it does give you this kind of triangular or diamond shape. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm going to take them with the points facing up and I'm going to stagger them, putting them onto the board to add height. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So let me turn my board around. I'm gonna go right up against where my olives are and I'm gonna build my cheese up. And again, I told you I liked having this rim around the edge. So it allows me to have something to build off of. And you can see right there, we've already added a lot of visual interest and height to the board. So now I have my basic meats and my cheeses. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to start to fill in. Let me just, perfect. So once we have our meat and cheeses on the board, that's your basic starting point. At this point, we've got our crackers and we've got our strawberries to add on. So I'm going to start filling in some of these gaps. So I'm going to start with my strawberries. And I'm going to put these right in the center. So they're big and luscious and beautiful. And I'm going to take a couple of strawberries and cut them in half. And I always leave the green stem on. I just think it looks really nice. So I'm going to put a couple of strawberries cut in half so you can see right into them. And that's going to go right in the center of our board. And then I need 
need my crackers. I'm actually going to take my log and move that over just slightly so I can fit my crackers on. There's no shame in your game. If you get things on and then you need to adjust them. If you want to, you can shift and move and adjust however you need to make your board look as nice and appealing as you like. Trust me, I don't make up my mind all the time. I'm a very indecisive person, so it's nice to be able to have that option. All right. So now that I have the faces of my board, let's grab our crackers. Now again, I didn't go with like a round butter cracker because a round cracker just looks very flat. It's circular, it doesn't have a point, it doesn't give you height. Whereas these square or rectangular crackers allow me to add that height around the edge of my board. So you can see here, I'm all about creating depth and height and visual appearance. I don't want to just put anything on the board that sits totally flat. And you can see we've kept building around our anchors. So we had our mustard and our crackers are going to get sit to, to sit secure right up against our mustard. We have our olives, so our cheese is going to press up against our olives. And I'm just going to shift things just a little bit here and there to kind of get lovely. Now at this point, you have a charcuterie board, just like you would have at any party or any event. Now, obviously we have one infused item on this board that does not make a cannabis charcuterie board. So we discussed before there's, you could add in cannabis leaves as garnishes. So instead of putting fresh herbs or fresh flowers, you could put fresh cannabis leaves on here. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk to you about the various cannabis products that are available on the market that you can use to add extra interest to your charcuterie board. Uh, Jocelyn, if you would share some of the links of the various products that I would recommend. So for today, I have these Turkish Delights. Turkish Delights are basically a very, very fancy gummy. I'm going to open these up and show you just how beautiful they are. Now, yes, you could throw any edible gummy on here that you wanted, but I wanted to add something that looked really, really elegant and beautiful. See those? Let's just be honest, a charcuterie board is just an excuse to be classy and bougie and try to impress your friends. So I'm gonna take a few of these and I'm gonna sprinkle them onto the board. Let's go right in here. And then the second thing I have are the salty dark chocolate covered almonds. Now you could do a combination of infused almond and uninfused almonds. You could add walnuts, pecans, any kind of nuts that you'd like on the board. I, I also, in the list of products that I recommend, uh, you could do a cannabis infused honey. So let's say we added on a beautiful piece of brie and we could drizzle some cannabis infused honey over the top of it. Uh, we could add in another jar, fill that jar with our cannabis infused honey. There's also cannabis infused beef jerky. So if you wanted to add an additional meat item onto the board, you could add an infused beef jerky. Uh, I'm gonna add in some of these cannabis infused almonds. So my almonds are about six milligrams a piece. My Turkish delights are about five milligrams a piece. And my mustard, let's just be honest, is probably about an eighth of a milligram for a teaspoon. So I have this really low, low, low dose edible. And then you can add on to it from there. I'm going to throw on some of these beautiful. And these are absolutely delicious. Quite honestly, I would eat this entire container if I could. Incredibly simple. Now, one of the things that I've grown to love since the time of the pandemic is micro joints. And they're teeny, teeny, tiny. I just thought it would be really cute, you know, if you had a couple of joints right on your charcuterie board. Encourage your friends to come up, grab their own joint, smoke away, enjoy their charcuterie board. All right, so I'm going to unmute everyone now. We can start a little QA. 
see how everyone's doing with their charcuterie boards. Let's go ahead. If you guys wanna go ahead and unmute yourselves, that would be amazing. Perfect. So ladies, how, Abby, can I see your board? I'm, gonna see, I'm curious to see how yours turned out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're still muted, I can't hear you. Oh, that's so funny. Hello? Yes. <laughs> that's funny. I had to mute myself. Um, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> All right. You don't have to share if you don't want to. Oh, no, I'm just not done yet. I'm. <laughs> oh, don't worry about being slow. I, trust me, you should have just kind of mentioned along the way. I would have slowed down for you. This is one of those things I've made these a million and one times, so I can go a little fast if I, if I, uh, get away with myself. But I honestly am super excited to share this with you because I feel like, let's be honest, the, the world of edibles when we first got into cannabis was just this idea of like, okay, you gotta buy a chocolate bar or you've gotta buy a gummy or you've gotta buy like this super high dose edible, you know, really delicate, simple things like this can become a way to incorporate cannabis. I mean, if I have friends who are not cannabis users, uh, this would be a great starting point. And one of the things I forgot to mention that I really, really want to mention, uh, anytime you do a infused food item, you want to let people know that your food is infused. So one of the things that I like to do is just grab, there, there. Uh, it's just to grab something like one of these decorative paper leaves. And I would write on here one teaspoon of mustard is equal to an eighth of a milligram or one Turkish delight is five milligrams or one almond is six milligrams and put that right onto your board so people know. Don't ever assume that your friends know that something has THC in it if you don't tell them. So make sure anytime you incorporate cannabis into your food, that you label that food, that you label the dosing on that food, allow people to know what they're getting themselves into. The cruelest thing you can do is to give someone an edible and not let them know how strong it is or what the effects will be for them. I'm Ladies, Vanessa, was that good for you? Did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed that. That was great <laughs> for me. I almost want it again. Um, so, hey, show, can you show us again the, uh, the leaves? I really like that component of uh, putting, what was it, the dosage on the leaves? Yep. So these are, um, what, let's see what the package says they're called. They're called deco leaves. You can buy them on Amazon or they're available at craft stores. And they're basically, they just look like a fall leaf, but they're made of paper. Uh -huh. And it's just a really nice decorative way and let's be honest, you could take a scrap piece of paper or you could get those wonderful little like cheese board signs to put mm -hmm. on here. But I like just having something that you can let people know what your dosage is so that nobody is going into their charcuterie board blind and coming out overdosing themselves. I love it. And then like the, okay, so the blunts at the, the end, the rolls. Oh my goodness. That's such an amazing touch. Um, now, what are those rolls that you put on the board that you have right now? And um, So these are from a company called Pure Beauty. Um, I also have these other ones from a company called Palms Petites. And they are an eighth of a gram or yeah, eighth of a gram joint. So they're just little small. Honestly, since the time of the pandemic, I, I'm not sharing with yes. anyone anymore. That's, I'm not that's gonna amazing. Them. It's like totally just for like a single use. You know, you scatter them on the board. You do not have to worry about sharing. It's very personalized. <laughs> and quite frankly, I mean, even after the pandemic, I think people are getting accustomed to just kind of wanting to keep something for themselves. So, yeah. um, so petite and cute. Oh my goodness. What I love even more is this particular brand on, I'm going to show you here on the filter. There's these tiny little eyeballs. <laughs> oh, you can't see them very well. They're like goofy little, like, you know, the googly eyes that you would get on kids' toys? They're like googly yeah. eyes on, on, the, on the, the filter. So you can actually, when you come up to the joint, it looks like you've got little people on your charcuterie board. They've got eyeballs. <laughs> 
Hey, Jen, I have a question. So I have a bunch of like tinctures like this. Is this something that someone could use on their char like charcuterie board or like, you know, to yeah. make okay, they do mix with that stuff. So if you wanted to, the way that I look at it is if you have an MCT oil or an olive oil based tincture, essentially what those are, are a finishing oil just like you would use in any traditional cooking. So I would say you could drizzle the oil over your olives, because let's just be honest, marinated olives with olive oil and fresh herbs are absolutely delicious. So you could drizzle the olive oil or the oil over that. Uh, you could add the tincture into your mustard, easily gonna blend in there. And so instead of using like a cannabis beer, just take your spicy ground mustard, uh, take your, prepared mustard. And then you probably want to use like maybe a little bit of vinegar or even like a juice, like an orange juice, something that was going to thin that out and then add in a little bit of your tincture. And now you can dose your mustard. And then of course, there's just simple things like drizzling it over the, uh, the meats or having just a little bowl for people to dip it. You know, you could mix. I just thought of this would be a great idea. Like, you know, when you go to some restaurants and they have that little bowl of like um, balsamic vinegar and olive oil. You could do a little bowl with balsamic vinegar, olive oil, and a couple drops of the tincture, and then people could just dip bread in it. And that's that's, another one. that's so funny you mentioned that because I was just thinking um, with like the little breads because obviously some charcuterie boards have like the little square pieces of bread, and you mentioned olive oil and then balsamic though. That's such a great touch to have an infused balsamic, you know, dip. Yeah, it and there are some companies now like. Um, I know Potley is doing a CBD and THC infused oil. They do a chili oil. They do a sriracha. Um, and I think there's a couple of companies now that are doing some sort of like infused vinegars. So just do yourself a favor, especially with the CBD products. You can Google and find those online. But do some searching and do some research because there are some amazing companies out there. And one of the things I love most about the cannabis community is that it's continuously evolving. So you're never gonna have, you know, a limit of products. Every time I go into a dispensary, there's something new. There's always some new product out there. Don't limit yourself to the idea that an edible or to incorporate cannabis into a dining experience or any event or any gathering has to be one thing. You know, a cannabis dinner party doesn't have to be just infused food. A cannabis dinner party just doesn't have to be smoking cannabis and food. This right here could be a cannabis cocktail party and it's simple and easy. Jen, um, for the board that you currently have, how many people would or guests would you say that would be appropriate for? So the general rule of thumb is you're looking at one to two ounces of cheese per person or if they're going to have other appetizers or if it's cheese before a meal. Uh, three to four ounces per person if the cheese is just going to be the entire meal. And I jokingly say, for me, I almost always do three to four ounces of cheese anyways, because it's like one piece of cheese for me, one piece of cheese for the board, one piece of cheese for me, one piece of cheese for the board. Uh, but I would say this is a board that will feed four to six people, quite honestly, like four people if you were just hanging out and eating, because we have three or four ounces of each cheese. We have three or four ounces of meat. I would say this would be about three to four people. And then if you were serving this before dinner, I would say this would probably serve six people. That's beautiful. Yeah, and it's, I think these are just a really great way. Um, I know during quarantine, one of all of my girlfriends for their birthday, the birthday gift I give every single one of my girlfriends is I make them a charcuterie board for their birthday. It's my gift every year. Um, and so this year with the pandemic, what I did is I made individual boards and all I did was I took small salad plates and I recreated this on individual plates. So each friend got their own plate. And actually the even better gift was when we did it for their birthday, I did one that they could eat that day on their birthday. And then I had one wrapped up and hidden in their fridge so that when everybody left and they were still stoned, they could go snack on it in the fridge. <laughs> my birthday is july 28th just putting that okay <laughs> mine's just passed <laughs> well i'm gonna get when when we can all gather together i will make you lay 
making charcuterie boards, I promise. That's so awesome. Okay. So, um, Jen, is it possible that I can just see the infused items that you used again? Because I think I may have missed a couple of them. Yeah. So, let's do, I'm going to bring this closer to the screen so you can see. So hold on one second. So, uh, Jocelyn put up links to some of the ones that I recommended, which are uh, like Key Cocoa Tea. Uh, the Key Cocoa Company makes infused honey sticks. Uh, one of the things I like about that is they make these sticks that are infused honey. So you can put the sticks on the board and your guests can come up and grab one as they like. So you don't even have to put it directly on the board. And then these are the Turkish Delights. Mm. That's the brand. And I went with a rose butter and hibiscus because I really thought that that would add an extra kind of zing to the board. And then this is a company called Santorini, and they make truffles as well as these chocolate covered almonds. I like the almonds because I feel like they add an extra crunch, but chocolate truffles would work really well as well. And then some of the brands that I didn't mention, but even other products that I've seen that would work really good. There's cannabis infused popcorn, um, cannabis infused, uh, there's a company called La Familia. They make small little round rice crispy treat balls. So you can put anything really onto your charcuterie board. And what I love about this is even though I suggested some items and I would say everything on this board should cost you maybe like $50 before your edibles. But a lot of times I will go into like, ethnic markets and find really inexpensive cheeses and really inexpensive meats and like interesting things especially if, like if i can find little baby apples or i can find some kind of fruit that looks different i put lychees onto my boards i've gone to asian markets and found chai flowers and put those on the board so anything that could add visual interest or appeal helps to make it a lot more interesting I see Abby over here just eating it. She's <laughs> <laughs> seeing her snack. <laughs> I told you I was doing these classes for a, yes. a corporate company, and all they did was eat the entire time. Like no one wanted to actually build it; they just wanted to sit and snack. It's my lunch. I love it. I love it because I mean, you just want to sit here and um, snack on it as you're um, building this out. This is beautiful. Abby, I would you give them away as gifts? Oh, unmute yourself, Abby. She asked you a question. I said, would you give yours away as gifts? Like, would you make little gifts like for with the charcuterie boards? Yeah. <laughs> it might now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I it's, was I hmm? It seems pretty easy. Like not easy, but she gave a lot of little tips to like make it look alive. Yeah, no, I mean, this is great. I love it because now I will have something I can bring. Well, I guess when we do things again with people, but this is it. Yeah. I'm you almost your own for yourself. I was about to say, really and truly, like something like this. Yeah. In the time of quarantine, everyone thinks like, okay, well, we, we can't, well, in the time of a pandemic, like we can't celebrate. Where in all honesty, I think it should be about celebrating the random stuff like oh there's a new netflix series like you know the crown's coming back on on netflix i'm gonna make a charcuterie board and call it a saturday night like you know like i feel like these are the things that we should okay. find little moments to celebrate for ourselves you know just because the world's psychotic and crazy doesn't mean you can't make yourself a beautiful snack and hang out and enjoy it absolutely Especially if we're thinking about like uh, the intention, like you said, watching a movie or even if, you know, we're kind of quarantined in and we want to go on for a run or something, um, you can kind of identify what sort of highs work best for you, what ingredients, what infused ingredients work best and incorporate that into your charcuterie experience and just have it all day. All right, Abby, I see your board looks done. Let's take a look. Yeah. So my husband already ate some off of it, but... <laughs> I mean, it looks beautiful. Wait, wait, hold on. Show that again, Abby. I mean, it's a. <laughs> I like your tray. It, it looks really good. I want to. Where's Abby? I can't. Thanks. See. Can you see it? 
Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh my goodness. That is my cord. Biggest. I know. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so good. Uh, so, is I, like a snack for the, for the day. Absolutely. <laughs> so tasty. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank you, Jen. It has been a pleasure. I am. Um, one second. I've got an echo. There we go. I didn't want to talk and kill everyone. Well, if, if we don't have any other questions for today, I'm really glad you guys got to click along. Abby, your board looks amazing. And your husband's probably the luckiest man in the world that he gets to sit there yeah. and enjoy this. Um, if you have any we'll, questions, we'll tell him that. Yeah. He's feeding um, the kid. Feel free to hit me up. I am at Chef Jen Cooks on Instagram, or you can uh, DM me if you have any questions about anything we did today. Uh, I know that uh, Vanessa will send out some recipes and information when we're all done and a link to this so you can recreate this anytime you need to. For Jocelyn, you can use it to, you know, when you have time to make this yourself. And I think it's just a fun thing to do. So, you know, you can watch the recording and I can give you all those tips and tricks every time you need to make one. Thank you so much. Thank so you fun. so much. Thank You're you, awesome. Jen. <laughs> It's been awesome, ladies. Thank you so much. Uh, Jocelyn, thank you again for Mommies and Mary Jane for just really pushing the education on this. It is so beautiful to see the direction of where cannabis is now compared to where it was a long time ago. And it just really inspires new innovation every day. This is so awesome. Definitely. Thank well, ladies, you. thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I had a ton of fun. I hope you did too. Um, go enjoy your edibles and go enjoy your Sunday. All right, Jenna, over. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.